One of the biggest challenges for filmmakers and videographers is lighting for wide angle scenes because once you start bringing in all those different lights and light modifiers, the equipment starts to kind of sneak into the frame and you might end up having like a C-stand leg down there hiding somewhere and obviously that does not work. So today I'm going to show you a few different ways that you can light for wide angle scenes so that none of the equipment shows up in the shot. Coming up, I'm gonna show you a bunch of example footage that I shot using these lighting setups for wide angle scenes. So stick around for that. A lot of times we tend to approach lighting in kind of a single-minded way. We think, okay, how am I gonna light this shot? And you get it all set up and everything looks great and perfect and then your subject moves and everything's thrown off. You switch lenses and all of a sudden you're seeing way more in the frame, your light stands are in the shot. And actually when it comes to Hollywood, a lot of times they're lining up the entire set so that the actors and subjects can move about the whole scene and they don't have to worry about standing in just the right spot. And it's not just so that the actors and actresses can move about in the scene, but the actual camera and camera operators can move around in the scene and they don't have to worry about moving lights and perfecting everything again. All right, now let's watch a little fitness yoga scene that I shot and I was able to get full wide angle shots at 11 millimeters and then all the way zoomed in at 125 millimeters without moving a single light. All right, let's watch it. When I lit this scene, I knew that I wanted to get a full wide angle shot of the entire room. So I set up my lights in such a way that none of them would end up in the shot. The first light that I set up was my ETC Source 4. And if you've been watching the channel for a while, you know that that's one of my favorite lights. It's an ellipsoidal light with a 750 watt bulb in there. So it's really powerful and I can spot it in and shape the light exactly how I want to. If you don't have something like this, you can use a light like the Aperture 120D, the 300 D, the new 600D. So with my Source 4 outside, I placed it up high on a C stand so it would look like sunlight streaming in through the window. Now a big challenge when you're lighting for daylight when it's actually nighttime out is that if you have any windows in the scene and you can see out of them, immediately the whole effect is dead and killed because you can see that it's totally dark outside. What I chose to do was use a huge piece of white diffusion and hang it on a C-stand outside of the window. When you're doing this, you might think, oh, I'll just take the big piece of diffusion, hang it on the outside of the window, and you won't be able to see out into the darkness anymore, and it'll just look blown out. Well, this will not work if you wanna get those nice, harsh, beams of light because now everything is totally diffused. Another thing I did to help sell this lighting setup was I just took an LED light panel outside and blasted it right at the diffusion so that it would blow out in camera and wouldn't be like underexposed or anything. The next light I set up was for the other window in the shot and this was a similar process but this time I actually put the diffusion right up against the window and just blasted an LED panel right into it and I was okay with the light coming in from this window being completely diffused and casting no shadows because science. The sun can only blast in as a nice hard light source from one angle, so it wouldn't have made sense to have two hard angle light sources casting shadows in each direction because we only have one sun. We're not on Tatooine. Another subtle thing I did to try and sell the outside world as being real is I actually cut some palm fronds off of a palm tree in my yard and place them right in the window. That way the light passing through the window would be broken up a little bit and look like there's just some natural greenery out there. Now I could have done a much better job at this if I had some big fake trees or ficuses or something like that that I could have just placed outside the window. This is a technique that is used all the time in Hollywood. One other thing that you can do to make the windows look really believable is hang some curtains or shears in front of them. Once I had these two lights set up and shining in through the windows, it actually brought up the overall ambience and lighting in the room a ton and I probably would have been able to shoot the entire scene with just these two lights alone but for me it was just a little bit too dramatic and too much shadow I wanted the scene to be a little bit more high key so that's where my key light came into play which was a one by one LED light panel from Falcon Eyes 
with a soft box and a light grid on it. Looking at the footage, I liked how well lit and sunny everything looked, but the key light definitely flattened out the image a little bit. So if you were shooting something more dramatic or narrative based, you might just nix the key light all together or bring it down really low. I also put a tube light in the stairwell, just bouncing off the walls. So it looked like ambient sunlight just coming in from another window. I shot the entire scene with the Fujifilm X-T4 using a rig build that I just showed in one of my recent videos. And for all the wide angle shots, I used the Tokina Cinema 11 to 20 millimeter lens. And I absolutely love this lens. It gets some beautiful shots. And for all my medium shots, I was using the Pictor Zoom's 20 to 55 millimeter T2.8. And then for those really zoomed in shots, I was using the Pictor Zoom's 50 to 125 millimeter. And this was just such a great range of lenses to go anywhere from 11 millimeters all the way up to 125 millimeters. Absolutely love being able to move around with my camera and get different angles and focal lengths without ever moving a single light. It was just so fast and easy to shoot an entire sequence because I lit for an entire scene and not just one single shot. So now I'm gonna show you an entire other scene that I lit and shot completely wide angle with a different lighting technique and setup. So let's check it out. So in this scene, obviously it's late at night. I'm just getting a drink of water and maybe looking for a little snack in the fridge. And it can be difficult to light nighttime scenes and make them look realistic. So of course, the first thing I did was blast my source for light again in through the kitchen window and make it kind of look like moonlight. And so of course I had to put a CTB, color temperature blue gel on the light to kind of cool it down and make it look more like moonlight. Although we know moonlight is more silverish and white than it is blue. So let's take a look at what makes this lighting setup different. So in order to actually see me, the subject in this shot, we needed to add another light, but I knew that I wanted to do a panning shot from the fridge to the sink and also do a bit of a slide. So I couldn't just put a light out anywhere in the scene because I was so wide angle, it would show up in the shot. So instead I hung the light overhead. And in order to do that, I used what's called a Manfrotto auto pole. And I've actually shown this on the channel before, but basically it's just a big extendable pole, kind of like a shower curtain that uses suction and friction to stay in place. So I put this between the two walls in my kitchen. So I was able to hang my LED light panel from it with a soft box diffusion and everything like that on it without worrying about it coming down. And I've actually hung up to three lights on this before and it was totally sturdy. So this is pretty lightweight configuration with just one LED light panel. When you're shooting nighttime scenes, it can be a real challenge to keep things looking natural and not sourcey and like it's just coming from a big spotlight. So that was definitely a big challenge with this lighting setup that I had to overcome. Because I was using an LED light panel, light was bouncing all over the room, getting on the ceilings and the walls. So I had to flag a lot of that light off. So I used some Roscoe cine foil and just flagged off the top and the bottom to help shape that light and keep it more just so they would be casting a little bit more on me and kind of the countertop and not just like all over the walls. I also brought in a Matthews 24 by 32 flag to flag the light off of the back cabinets because they had a really heavy sheen to them and it was casting like a big spotlight right back into the camera and it just, you know, totally looked fake. So that was the only C stand that I did use in this situation, but I had it boomed out over the camera so that no stand or anything would actually be in the shot. So it kept everything underneath nice and clear and open so I could get those nice wide panning and sliding shots without worrying about any stands getting in the scene.
But overall, this lighting setup worked really nicely to get a full wide shot of the kitchen and also allow me, the subject, to move around but still be well lit enough to be seen and not have to move any lights around. Of course, there are other great techniques for lighting wide angle scenes like bouncing light or using a menace arm, and maybe I'll cover some of those in a future video. And guys, if you want to see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now because I have a ton more videos coming out on shooting, editing, lighting, gear reviews, everything like that, and you don't want to miss it. All right, I'll see you in the next video.